Well, in case you were wondering, Danil Medvedev is back. Danil Medvedev crushes the dreams of Carlos Alcaraz and many tennis fans of seeing another Djokovic Alcaraz final. But what a performance from the big Russian who won a major, who won this tournament in 2021, beating Novak Djokovic in the final. And for a while, I think people really forgot how good this guy is, especially on this surface. So Danil Medvedev has, to me, confirmed that there is three men at the top of men's tennis, not just Carlos Alcaraz and Novak Djokovic. So how did, jo how did Medvedev beat Alcaraz today? A lot of people didn't think he had a chance. I knew he did, but he still had to play amazing, and he did. So we're going to look into what he did, what Carlos maybe didn't do as best as or as well as he could have. And we're going to preview the matchup, the, the final before uh, between Djokovic and Medvedev for the second time in the US Open final. This is going to be big. Wow, what a match. That was crazy. Let's get into it. Here's a slice. <laughs> Okay, people. Wow. What a match. What a match. Danil Medvedev, man. You got to love him. He is one of my favorites. Alcrat is, is one of my favorites. And it was, you know, clearly the more competitive semifinal of the two. We just made the re reaction to Shelton versus Djokovic. That was not really close. This, were two, these, this semifinal was two absolute contenders for the title facing off. The question was, though, after getting wiped in Wimbledon and at Indian Wells, uh, Alcaraz beating Medvedev, we didn't know and we had doubts, like Medvedev said he had, about how competitive this, this match could be and if Medvedev could actually beat Alcaraz. So, well, now we know the answer to that. And as Medvedev said, after the match, he had to play better than himself, above his level. Well, I don't know what that if that's necessarily true. I think he just played vintage Danil Medvedev on a hard court. This is as good as we've seen him play. And this is what made him number one player in the world. This is what made him beat Djokovic in the final of the US Open in 2021. Um, and for a while there seemed almost untouchable on hard courts. Um, as we know, after beating Djokovic in the final of the US Open in 2021, Medvedev then went and lost from two sets to love up against Nadal in the Australian Open final in 2022. And to me, that was a bad loss. That was a loss where he really, Nadal did amazing to come back. He played valiantly, but Medvedev really kind of got tight and let that match slip away. Um, and since then, then he wasn't able to play at Wimbledon because of the Russian ban. Um, and he just hadn't kind of been the same player. He had a great, he's had a great year this year. We know that for most of the year, we were talking about how it was the three of them, Djokovic, Alcaraz, and Medvedev, who'd had the better year. Um, and then coming into this hardcore swing, a little bit quiet from Medvedev. But then now he's come back, and I would say fully up to the level that he can bring. And tonight, was it was unbelievable. He hit some, uh, some of the craziest, most smothering shots that, you know, it was vintage Medvedev and really kind of, put the lock on Alcaraz in a way. So we'll get into that. We'll look at the stats. Um, shout out to our sponsors, Go Sport, the best bag in tennis. If you want to win a bag, they're expensive because they're amazing and they'll last you a long time like the one I have. Uh, if you want to win a bag, you can enter the giveaway. You got to subscribe to Go Sport and the Slice here on YouTube and submit your email to the Go Sport newsletter below at the link and then you're in and we will be choosing a winner on Sunday. Also, shout out to Athletic Greens. If you're thinking about trying Athletic Greens, use our code below and it helps out the show. Appreciate you guys. So, Danil Medvedev takes out Carlitos Alcaraz in a matchup that yeah we had anticipated and we were not sure how it was going to go. I'm realizing now I don't have any other pictures of Alcaraz other than here. But, uh, but yeah, what happened in this match? So, big momentum swings, overarching, tight first set. Alcaraz starts fast, and then Al and then the uh, Medvedev serve really gets going. They go to a tiebreaker, tight tiebreaker. Medvedev wins it. And then Alcaraz has a bit of a hangover, and Medvedev really starts to impose his game, playing big, 
playing more aggressive than he has in the past on this hard court. I think that he knew he had to. Um, hitting the ball super clean well, keeping the ball deep, painting lines, and just playing defense and counterpunching like he can whenever he needed to. And Alcaraz really didn't have it in that second set. Alcaraz takes a break, goes and changes his clothes between the third set. Uh, and then he comes out and Medvedev a little bit slow there, a little bit didn't stay on top of it. And Alcaraz gets a little bit of steam on him. Still though, only one, the one break, Alcaraz almost had a second break and he didn't capitalize. And then it became very close at the end of the third set where Medvedev was still definitely in the match. Uh, even though he lost that third set, come to the fourth set, break point for Alcaraz, I think at 1-1, can't get it. Medvedev stays uh, on serve. And then there's the big game at 2-3. Alcaraz serving 2-3 in the fourth set. Alcaraz was up 40-15. And then he lost two points. One of them, I believe, was a great get from uh, from Medvedev. And one of them was just a, kind of a forehand where he didn't move his feet and he got ahead of it and pulled it wide. So then you're into deuce. And then they had a really long game uh, where Medvedev played great to keep holding on, keep staying in the deuces. And then eventually he got a break point that he won. And when Medvedev can serve the way he can and he was serving the way he was, it's tough for it's tough for anyone to break him. And it was very tough for Alcaraz to break Medvedev on this court with the way he was serving. And that is where you see how elite Medvedev can be. When his serve is working, I think we forget that he's one of the ultimate servers on the ATP Tour. Um, and yeah, and that hurts anyone because, you know, as good of a returner Alcaraz is on this court, Medvedev is such a master at using the angles at reading the ball, and uh, it's gonna. There's an interesting thought here about about Wimbledon compared to the hard court, about grass compared to the hard court for Alcaraz. Um, you know, Alcaraz beat Medvedev easily, and then beat Djokovic in the final Wimbledon. I think the grass makes Alcaraz's serve better, whereas on this court, it's a smooth bounce. It's a it's a clear it's a steady bounce, obviously medium fast hard courts and. Daniil Medvedev can sit at the back wall and he did a really good job today of also reading the out wide slider serve from Alcaraz taking a step early out there and hitting forehand ripping cross court passing shots and just getting all over it. Um, so I think grass right now, it seems to be Alcaraz's best surface the way he played at Wimbledon. Um, or you can just say, the American hard courts is, is Medvedev's best surface by far. And his game is just at the same level as Djokovic and Alcaraz on this surface. So the big test obviously now is going to be how does Medvedev um, match up against Djokovic, but we didn't get to the finish the fourth set. Sorry. I got this. I got distracted. So after, you know, I felt like, the third set went Alcaraz's way, and then as the fourth set kept going, Medvedev's smothering defense, so he's getting to these shots from Alcaraz that other players aren't getting to, and then he's counterpunching like other players are not doing against Alcaraz. And Alcaraz had to work hard for stuff. I think he was used to getting quicker points, doing more damage with his shots, and Medvedev, like he was famous for, like he got to number one in the world for doing, is so amazingly good at absorbing pace, counterpunching, and keeping balls in positions in the court that are un unattackable. Like he, just the ability for him to hit so flat and keep it so close to the line like he did tonight is unbelievable. So he played so good. So at the end of the fourth set, Medvedev goes to serve it out. And I got notes of what happened in each point, and it was crazy. Um, Medvedev serving for the match. Starts it with a backhand on forced error, forehand on forced error. Then unreturned serve and an amazing pass from Alcraz. So that's 40 50, or 15 40. So that's two break points there for Alcraz. Medvedev then does a smash winner off of first serve, one break point saved. And then Carlos does a cross court forehand wide, a break point saved again. Unreturned first serve, match point for Medvedev. Then he double faults on match point. Two bad tosses, really went for the second serve, missed it. Uh, double faults again. To set up a break point, gets mad at the crowd, goes, Good job, guys. Thanks for screaming between my points. Um, then Alcaraz unforced error after Medi, Medi uh, clips the line. That was a bad one. That was on break point where Alcaraz had the whole court wide open. I think he thought the ball was out and then he just missed because he got distracted. 
Alcaraz forehand into the net after that, and then Alcaraz volley winner to save another match point, and then Alcaraz backhand on first there, and then a Medvedev backhand into the net, so a bit cagey there from both guys, and then an unreturned first serve, um, and Alcaraz du- and Medvedev gets it done. So I think watching this match, a lot of us thought you know Alcaraz is just going to find a way because he's just found a way so many times. He found a way in Wimbledon against Djokovic. But this kid's not invincible. And to me, it's more interesting that there's three guys that can all beat each other. I mean, we'll see with Medvedev against Djokovic than just being Alcaraz and, and Djokovic at the top of men's tennis. Because my question coming into this was, if, if Alcaraz comes and just wipes Medvedev, beats him in three sets and, and kind of does what he did at Wimbledon, there's kind of a two-man, there's two men at, in, in men's tennis that everyone else is trying to, you know, to see if they can compete again. But with this result from Medvedev beating Alcaraz like he did, uh, there's definitely Medvedev in the mix there for sure. And, you know, if he can beat Djokovic to win the US Open, easily you can say another big three is here with Djokovic, Medvedev, and Alcaraz. And you can maybe even see that, I would say that now, even uh, without that. Because going into the final, Djokovic had a very unphysical last two matches, and this was a very physical match. But We'll see. We'll see how much Medvedev should be fine. He should be able to recover, and I expect a great final. Let's look at the stats from the match because they still tell an interesting story. So big, big story here for me is zero aces for Carlos Alcaraz. Zero double faults, seventy percent first serves in, but only winning sixty nine percent for the match of his first serve. So that's a low percentage, but he doesn't have the biggest or best first serve, and we've known that. I think at Wimbledon, it was his serve was helped by the quickness of those courts. Um, but this is Daniil Medvedev returning on a hard court, like we said, is as good as it gets, basically. And he had to, Alcaraz had to work so much for his first serve points. Um, and that just wears on you. And it looked like a war on him going to that fourth set. If we go set by set, um, first set. Medvedev, higher percentage on his first serve. 85% win on the first serve. Other than that, it was very tight. Second set, 92% win on first serve. He's higher than Alcaraz. Third set, which Alcaraz won, he was the higher with the first serve win percentage at 76%. Um, And the second serve also came to the net amazingly. 13 out of 15 points at the net one, but only at one break point, and he got it. So it's it's closer than he thought. In set two, Alcaraz had no break points. In set one, he had two that he did not capitalize. Set four, he had six that he didn't capitalize on. But set four, back to Medvedev serve dominance, 83% on his first serve, and Alcaraz down to 65%. So very interesting here to see. Medvedev's serve really was a key factor for him. In this fourth set, look at this. 15 winners from Medvedev, nine unforced ever errors. The quality so high. Eight winners from Malkaraz, 11 unforced errors. Some of those unforced errors killed him. Um, but that's just such quality tennis from Medvedev. So overall, 82% one in the first serve for Medvedev is high. And that's a lot of pressure. And then Alcaraz only not winning even 70% is a lot of pressure on Alcaraz to sustain. If we had to go back to the, um, why don't I do that? Djokovic versus Alcaraz um, Wimbledon final. I wonder if they'll show accurate first serve percent. Win on first serve percentage was roughly the same, honestly, uh, uh, for. Alcaraz, he won 70% of his first serve, but Djokovic is not the server of Medvedev. So Djokovic only won 62% of his first serves in the Wimbledon final, whereas Medvedev won 82% of his first serves here at the at the US Open. So great serving percentage performance from Medvedev, amazing mental performance from Medvedev, stayed in the match when Alcaraz started to turn the momentum and the crowd got behind him. He just stayed locked in, unbelievably focused, and played yeah his best tennis to win this and reminded everyone why he is why he was the number one player in the world why he is a major champion and why i believe he has a great chance against Djokovic. so that's going to be an amazing match i hope uh we've got Djokovic 
you know, the new number one in the world coming in after this tournament, going for his 24th slam. We've got Medvedev coming for his second slam, having memories from when he beat Djokovic here last time at the U.S. Open. I think Djokovic is going to be in a better spot than he was last time, as we all remember he was mentally cooked, physically probably pretty cooked after losing a lot of sets in that U.S. Open and trying to complete the calendar grand slam. So there's all that pressure on Djokovic. I think he definitely has a lot less pressure now. He's won 23 slams. He's the all-time leader in slams. What else does he need? Obviously, he's just going to want to win this match. And I think Medvedev's going to have to play the way he played today against Alcaraz, against Djokovic, to have a chance, to have a good chance. But I think if he does play this way against Djokovic, he can definitely win. And it wouldn't take any more than this to win. Um, and we'll see. But it's not Djokovic versus super young guy. It's not Djokovic versus super inexperienced guy. It's Djokovic versus a guy who has a good record against him who's been there before. Um, so it's going to be really, really interesting to see. It will be interesting. I think I do think advantage Djokovic big time because of what we saw today. So we saw jo we saw Medvedev returning from super far back. A lot of people are wondering why he doesn't change up and come forward. He's tried that before, and it just doesn't work for him. He doesn't have the hands, really, um, to... He tried this with Kyrgios, I remember, in Toronto or Cincinnati last year. He tried to stay up close to the baseline and he didn't have that. His best bet is to stay back and just try and read the serves and then hit really good returns from deep, which he can do repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. So we're going to see Djokovic slide that serve off the court and come in behind it. And we'll see how volley, how good his net play is on the day. We'll see how good his confidence is on the day. And we'll see how good Medvedev's returns are on the day. Um, but yeah, a lot to be, a lot to dive into there. I might make another video previewing it. Before then, I might not. We'll see how it goes with busyness. But yeah, big, big win for Medvedev's career. Career defining win almost. If he, you know, if he loses here, it's just like he's got, he's now, his time has come and gone almost. But Medvedev is right in the thick of things as far as champions and top of the men's game goes. And yeah, the Djokovic Medvedev final is an amazing final. So we get treated to another one, which I cannot wait for. So let the best man win. The best man today won. And for Carlos Alcaraz and his fans, this one's going to hurt. But he's 20 years old. He's 20 years old. He already won a major this year. He won a major last year. And twenty. the rest of this year is going to be crazy. And you better believe that 2024 might be the year of Carlos Alcaraz. Um, and it's going to get scary time because he's just going to keep getting better. Anyways, Medvedev wins. He's through to play Djokovic in the final. What a day of men's tennis. That was crazy. We got the women's final tomorrow, which I'm extremely excited for. Sabalenka versus Coco Golf. It's going to be a big time. We'll see you guys then. Thanks.